Good evening. You join me here at none other than Dorchester Lake. Um, obviously, this is pretty much where I fish all the time, uh, especially for the tench. Um, yeah, so just got down for a night. Um, got permission from the boss at home. Um, rushed home from work at five o'clock. Got my gear loaded, and I was across here and set up by seven o'clock. Um, I've gone on a spot that I've not fished in for the tench for quite a while. Uh, the last time I actually fished this spot for tench was probably about three, four years ago. Um, and I was fishing on the float at that time, and I had a £9.10 ounce out on the Waggler, which was pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, my tench fishing's moved on a little bit since then. I've got into uh, feeder fishing for them, sort of fishing helicopter rig style, worm kebabs, things like that. And um, yeah, my fishing's improved no end. Uh, we had a great weekend just gone. We had the Tench Social here on Dorchester Lake, uh, which I managed to win with the overall biggest weight. Um, it was six Tench for just over £27, I think, something like that. The biggest was only you know, £6, 12 ounces. Might be, can't remember. It's a bit of a blur. It was a tiring weekend due to sun and lots of food and a few beers. And then it was all back to work Monday. Um, but yeah, I'm back. Um, I arrived, got some bait mixed up, and then got my rod straight out on the spot. It's all looking pretty positive. There's rolling on my spots, there's fizzing. I've had a few harsh liners at the moment, so I'm going to have to check my rig soon, shortly, just to make sure I've not been done by any roach or anything like that. Um, and yeah, so the idea of this video really is just to help those that enjoy fishing the lake, uh, those that know it, and those that are perhaps looking for somewhere in the Oxfordshire area for some great tench fishing because that is what we are all about here. Um, tench fishing and carp fishing. Although there's, there's loads of, you know, we've got a handful of, I say a handful, we've got 16 bream in here, which should do pretty well if historically um, they grow like the other ones did. Um, we've got some great silvers fishing, you know, plenty of rudd and roach and perch. Um, and then winter time, the anglers like their pike fishing. Um, but yeah, I'll just say a little bit, because my rods are still twitching, so I'm just keeping an eye. Um, but yeah, what I'll do in this video is I'll go through my bait, how I use it, and then I'll try and uh, at some point, probably in the morning, um, I'll show you the rigs I'm fishing. Um, my rigs, you know, it's what I've been taught. They're certainly probably not the best you can use um, in terms of the, the setup, but it's something that works. And if there is anyone that is looking how to fish feeder style, especially in a weedy lake like this, these are the sort of rigs you want to be using. Um, there is variations and people like to do different things with their bait on these rigs but I keep it simple um, and yeah so I'll start off with the bait um, a mix I like to use both in my feeder and also as a spod mix um, it doesn't change much is this old mix here so basically just get some out of my hand this is uh, micro pellets. So I, I get mine from Blake's Baits, it's local, they're a good pellet, they do the job I want them to. Um, so it's a micro mini mix pellet, so I think there's sort of two mils and four mils. Um, great little mixture, ideal for the tench, keep them grubbing around. In that mix is uh, maggots, dead maggots, I like to freeze them so they can't just disappear into the silt. There's maggots, uh, the tench on here do like boilies and when I'm carp fishing I do catch a fair few tench so I try and incorporate you know a good fish meal boilie into my base of the spod mix I'm using um, so in here I've got some redfish pro from Blake's baits and I've just chucked them through the ridge monkey grinder um, and then added them into my pellet mix um, I'm massive on flavors and flavor signals um, and for this mix that I've been using recently um, I've sort of changed the way I do it. I used to just add hemp oil uh, and then just sort of dampen it down with water. Um, however, because I'm massive, you know, I've become more and more edging towards using liquids and things like that. So my mix basically, there was about four kilo of micro pellet originally, and I just kept soaking them and adding more and more um, sticky krill liquid, the cloudy, the cloudy spot liquid. Uh, it's about £10 for a litre, but it really, really soaks into the pellets well. So I probably put about a third of a bottle in to four kilos of pellets, gave them a good mix around and left them. And then when I come to use them, um, like when I turned up to the social at the weekend on here, I probably added another 
quarter of a bottle and just dampen them down again. I added some hemp oil and I also added some anchovy extract as well, just for a, a slightly different flavour in there. Um, and then that, that's pretty much the base. I spot this out uh, sometimes with a little addition of some casters. Um, maybe I'll put chopped worm out, but I'm not one to spot too much worm out. Uh, maybe because I'm a tight ass, maybe. Or because I, I want to draw the fish into that specific flavour signal they're looking for. Um, worm is a great attractor. I don't want it spread all over. I want them homing in on that feeder that's on the bottom. Um, you know all the aminos that are coming out of the worm I want it on that spot right near my rig um, so generally I will just put the chopped worm in my feeder um, this mix I use in my feeder as well um, and again I just dampen it down a little bit more because I want to push it into my feeder uh, to the point that it's not going to come out too easy I like it to get that consistency so that if I'm pulling a rig back in uh, just to rebate, recast, whatever it's just sort of sticking to the inside of the feed there's a little bit left maybe um, and I know then that I've got it right because the feed isn't just hitting the water and dispersing everywhere um, I always want some sort of signal directly where my feeder is um, and yeah I've changed the mix slightly this time so I've got that pellet, same pellet mix that I've put out there um, I put a little bit of corn as well just because I just wanted to give a different perspective out there and I mean regardless of what's out there they seem to be fizzing up on the spot at the moment um, yeah worms I don't buy I don't buy them in pots just go big I think it's 18 pound for a kilo Willie's worms and they are good worms I've still got some at home actually from last year as you can see they're great these are the uh, medium the medium dendrobinas they're all sort of good size um, you know, you're sort of averaging something like that. A couple of them, and I just basically stick two of them on a hair rig, chop the tails off a little bit just to get the liquids moving around. Um, and then for me, feeder mix, as I say, I've changed it a little bit. So I've got a, chop, a pot of chopped worm in there, and that's with the soil as well from the worms. And then this session, I've just changed it up. I just wanted to get a different food signal in there. Uh, so I've added some of the, oh, let me just grab it here actually. It is, uh, there we go, got it here. I love Frenzied, I love the Dynamite Baits Frenzied products, the ground baits, I used to fish the green swim stim a lot. Um, but I've since seen this one in the shops recently, because I don't usually look at ground baits, but I come across it, and it's the Frenzied, uh, the Frenzied Worm Meal. Um, so it's a decent ground bait, a, there seems to be a good bit of hemp content in there which I think a lot of their frenzied ones are based off of, then it's got worm meal in, uh, dried worm basically, that's been ground down. So it's just another food signal. And again, in that mix, as you can see here, again, there's some dead maggots. Um, there's a big handful of the micro pellets that I'm using in my mix. And then I've just got maybe half a tub of the ground bait in. And I've got that to a consistency that when I put it in that feeder, I can plug that really tight and it should go sticky. You always find the hemp sort of ground baits with hemp in they do get quite sticky um, and it's it's just what I want so hopefully that will stay in the feeder it's the first time I've used this sort of mix um, so I'm hoping it works um, and yeah all I've put in there is maggots and I say what happens is I will uh, sort of plug the bottom of my feeder um, which I'm using the uh, quorum feeders at the moment I think they're 35 grams um, the cage feeders so I'll sort of plug the bottom I'll get a little bit of the chopped worm, put that in the middle, and then I'll plug some more of this in the top. Um, and this sort of approach is what's been working for me. I fish a helicopter rig at the moment. The weed is just starting to come up in here. Um, it's a couple of feet in areas, so I sort of adjust the uh, helicopter accordingly. But pretty much most of my fishing for tench is a helicopter rig with a um, worm kebab rig, uh, hair rigged. And it's what's been doing the business. Um, so yeah. We'll see what happens. I hope to come back with a couple of videos through the night, uh, or if not, I'll, in the morning. Uh, it just depends how tired I am. It's been a busy few days at work, even though it's a short week. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to sort of catch a few fish and relax, really, and hopefully just give a few people that are unsure of how to approach this lake an insight into the way that I and quite a few others that fish here for the tench do. Um, I know sitting behind buzzers and fishing at night is not for everyone, 
but having said that it works and if you're that sort of angler then this is the sort of approach for you um, and I'll talk a bit more about you know my approach and the way that some of the other anglers approach it the different baits later on and, and it's not to say that float fishing you know your traditional tactics of fishing your, your quiver tip and your feeder don't work they do float fishing does very well on here in the margins um, just on the drop offs sort of fishing you know sprinkling the bait over every now and again and um, yeah I'm just holding out there's definitely signs of fish in the area I see my left hand rod not long after casting out it's had a couple of li I think liners but I will check the worm on that one just in case because the last thing I want is a rig sat there and no bait on it especially when there's fish on the spot so I'm just going to check that and make sure that everything's kosher um, and then we'll go from there but I'll leave this video here and we'll come back to you later on bye bye Nine fourteen. Nine fourteen, mate. Yeah. PB. Been waiting all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting all night. Had a bream earlier. Dirty bream. Dirty bream. I don't mind bream. And then, yeah. I did actually probably just got to sleep. <laughs> we'll, we'll know if this is the one Jamie had. It's got a mark on it. That's a big fish. That is a big fish. Right, I'd say it's not full of spawn yet, mate. No, I was going to say that's going to be a double. The old gobble. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. And what a beautiful, stunning morning it is. So, as you would have seen from my clip earlier, a bit of an eventful night. Um, sort of a night of two halves really uh, obviously when I spoke to you earlier on um, when I was sort of setting up and got my rods out it looked bang on for a few bites um, you know I put my bait out and there was fish fishing on the spot already I was confident of a few tench uh, the night started probably about I don't know half past ten maybe a little bit earlier um, I had a bream of about five or six pound after getting constant liners and I thought yeah okay there was still fish fishing on the spot. I thought we're in for it here. Um, then it went on quite quiet for the rest of the night. It wasn't until I sat I sat watching a film until sort of midnight and then went to sleep. And at half past two, me uh, left hand rod screams out, which I'm fishing at seven wraps to a clear area. Um, yeah, sort of a, a few minutes battle, slipped the net over a, a decent sized tench. And I didn't really comprehend at the time because I was just so tired what sort of fish it was it looked big left it in the net got myself sorted um, made a brew and then sorted all my weighing gear out weighed it up um, and it was weighed at 10 two. weighed it again sort of 10 one I okay it was uh, I was half asleep so I thought I'd give uh, Matt a shout around the other side of the lake he was tench fishing I got the next door, swim next door to him to wake him up and come round and sort of just verify with his scales and get some pictures for me. And uh, yeah, it wasn't quite a ten pounder, but it's a new PB for me at nine pound fourteen ounces. Uh, absolutely stunning tench. Um, real, considering obviously that they started to become spawn bound. You know, the ten that come out the ever last weekend, you could tell it was full of spawn. This fish was still in quite good proportion you know for the, for the size of it um, so I think a week later that fish probably would have been a 10 plus um, so I've just missed out on that 10 pound mark I've been hunting for so long however 9 pound 14 ounces I beat the PB by four ounces what a fish um, absolutely made up and it come on the rig I was talking to you about earlier the uh, worm kebab rig fishing it helicopter style um, just over the mix that I explained earlier and um, yeah reliable does the business um, yeah after half past two after that fish I got that fish back just to I got it back and then sort of no sooner you know half past three you're starting to see the, the, the light coming through so got a few hours kip I have hoped for a few fish this morning um, 
that sun got up pretty high pretty quick and it's killed the fishing uh, but nonetheless an enjoyable session um, you know nine pound 14 ounce is a mega fish in most people's standards so I'm, I'm very very happy you know fish of a lifetime um, and yeah it's gonna be a hard one to beat but we will keep trying um, probably a couple more weeks left of tench fishing for me really I usually once they spawn I will switch back onto the carp but we'll see you know there's some big males in here to be had as well um, but yeah I'm, I'm still yeah in awe of what I caught this morning you know my nine pound ten was what was that probably five years ago I had that now out of this same swim on the float um, so to catch me biggest one out of this swim again yeah absolutely made up um, We'll see what happens. Hopefully they keep feeding over the next couple of weeks and uh, we'll come back with some more videos. Um, but yeah, unless I get anything else, that's me. Um, my rods are still out. I want to leave them out to the finish. I'm not going to get them out and show you the rigs just yet. But as I, if you Google helicopter rigs, um, tench fishing, they are pretty simple. If you're fishing them in weed, fish them safe with uh, rotten bottoms, things like that. And don't be afraid to put bait out. Um, it's, it's one thing I will say, people ask me, oh, how are you fishing, how much bait are you putting out? To put it into perspective, uh, I started off yesterday with eight midi spawns on each spot. Um, topping them up with a feeder, I recast a few times with the feeders, so there was a little bit extra go out. I had the bream and then had the tench and I put another five spawns out there. Whether that's done me an injustice or not, and that's part of the reason why I've not had another bite, maybe, but I doubt it very much. Sorry, that's the old birds on my line again, getting a little bit exciting. Um, but yeah, I doubt that very much. Um, the tension here, like, they like their food and the silvers get on top of it as well, so it, it won't last, you know, too long. But yeah, there's no more fish, that's me. Um, whenever you're on the bank, feel free to approach me if I'm about. I will always be quite open about my tench fishing, how I'm fishing, where I'm fishing. My job as part of helping run this lake is helping you catch fish and that's the important thing for me a confident angler is putting bait in and bait that's going in is feeding these fish and helping them grow and it's all part of the cycle i'm here to help you guys as much as i am to help myself you know i get my rewards from my fishing just like last night um, and if i can help others do the same then i'm a happy man i'm doing something right but anyway till next time we'll catch you later bye bye